Crime Complaint Review Board started in 1993. It's supposed to investigate complaints against police officers breaking the rules. But is the CCRB breaking its own rules to investigate cases fairly? News 12's Sabrina Franza has this Team 12 investigative report in the latest installment of our Justice for All series. It took my son's death to get rid of him. It shouldn't have took that. New Yorkers, Americans, have felt this video. They've heard the words. I can't breathe. It shows the fatal chokehold now former officer Daniel Pantaleo used in 2014 on Eric Gardner. You know, it just... It just sickens me to think of him, to even say his name. What many New Yorkers might not have seen are these complaints made to the CCRB, the largest civilian complaint review board in the country. They investigate allegations against police officers like Pantaleo. 10, 11, 12, 13, at least uh -huh. 14. I, heard, I thought it was nine. These complaints all filed before the fatal chokehold that ended Garner's life. Physical force searching a person. Team 12 investigates requested detailed CCRB information on officer complaints a year ago. We received over 150,000 CCRB complaints in detail in March of this year, dating back to 1994. In Pantaleo's case, we found four of the 14 complaints were proven substantiated, meaning investigators found enough evidence to prove those allegations happened. But before Gardner's death he was terminated here in and Pantaleo's firing, the only consequences he faced were forfeiting vacation days and instruction, the least severe penalty. Two counts for instruction. Training at the command level. It shows, you know, instruction was given there was a departmental trial and there was no penalty. Mm-hmm. Right. That he should have been gone. Had the CCRB kept tabs on officers with repeated offenses, Carr says she could have just celebrated her son's 50th birthday. Would your son be here then? I believe so. I really do. I believe he, he wouldn't have been killed by Pantaleo. Carr says Pantaleo's firing was just one step in the right direction, but where there's smoke, there's fire. For the CCRB, we do have someone there that's willing and that is adamant about doing their job because I've met some of them. But are those people enough? The work that I did didn't really mean much. This former CCRB investigator quit in 2015 because she says it was so ineffective. We're keeping her anonymous because of her fear of retribution. But she says the 51% threshold for proof was rarely upheld because it was held up much higher. They can completely ignore the evidence presented in the case and just make their own decision. Our records show that just 7% of the over 150,000 complaints we've obtained were the only ones with proof of fault. We asked her why. I witnessed a lot of racism and classism towards the people who um, would file complaints at the CCRB. People talking about how um, they were unreliable, how some people were filing it just to try to get money from a lawsuit. Investigators like her make recommendations to the board, which votes in panels of three. Two of the members are either appointed by the mayor, city council, or public advocate, and the third by the police commissioner. The board is led by chair Fred Davey. There's always uh, room for improvement. We asked him about Pantaleo's case. Pantaleo was only one of seven officers our data shows was ever terminated from a CCRB investigation. So the only problem with that case from the CCRB's point of view is that it took us too long to, to get to it because the district attorney and the federal government asked for a hold. We have decided that that's not going to be the case anymore. Chokeholds. Meanwhile, we found dozens of serious, substantiated complaints. Pepper spray incidents. With no serious penalties. This new disciplinary guideline, disciplinary matrix, actually has what we call presumptive penalties. The new matrix just in effect this year, after months of calls for police reform, ties officer offenses to specific penalties, like unlawful chokeholds should result in firing. Final authority is what the CCRB needs. They don't have that authority yet. Right now, the police commissioner still has final say, but that could all change with a bill in the state Senate committee, which would give the CCRB ultimate authority over officers that break the rules. Get involved before it happens to you. For this mom, no legislation can bring her son back. So many people are losing their lives because of po bad police officers. But there's potential in the CCRB. If you do your job, these, these police officers wouldn't be on the force. If it's done right, Sabrina Franza, News 12.
and be sure to scan the QR code that you see at the bottom of your screen right here. It's going to bring you right to our website for more on all of our Justice for All stories that we've been covering. And tune in every Wednesday night here on News 12 at 10 o'clock for the latest Justice for All coverage.